Okay, so this video is just going to document some research I'm doing on a universal motor. A whole bunch of guys over in the forums have been experimenting and doing all kinds of uh, cool stuff with these universal motors out of vacuum cleaners. So I decided to join the fun. I ordered one of these vacuum cleaner motors off eBay and I tore it all apart. It had a rotor and an encasement. I've taken all that out and uh, I've got down to just the essential part here, which is the motor. And I went ahead and rewound the uh, coils. These are 300 turn uh, Litz wire coils. I've tried a bunch of different coils and wire configurations and this seems to work best right now. But anyway, uh, I'm just going to go over a few of the things that I think are unique about this motor. And the first thing that surprised me was that the rotation direction uh, is independent of the polarity. So a lot of times when you're driving a DC motor, you can change the direction by switching your polarity. But in this one, that's not the case. Check this out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and connect the motor with standard polarity. And you can see that the direction of rotation is uh, this way. So it's rotating toward us. Uh, so now I'm going to flip the uh, polarity around here on my battery. So I'm connecting the uh, what was the negative to the positive. And we're going to do the same test again. So let me go ahead and connect up here. And you can see that with the polarity flipped, the direction of rotation remains the same. So pretty interesting. Very different than most of the motors that I'm used to experimenting with. Now the other thing that's fascinating to me is using one of these motors as an inverter type device. Over here I have an AC light bulb and I'm able to light this AC light bulb up off this 12 volt battery. Now normally that light bulb would not light up off this 12 volt battery but I'm able to spin uh, the motor here, fun have it function as a generator with these uh, generator coils and then tap off those generator coils to light the light bulb up. So you can see that uh, that works fine. Lights right up. I did try uh, one of these uh, LED AC bulbs and that lights up as well. So that's all very interesting. But the uh, next portion here in the video is a more fascinating effect where when you load up the motor with a heavy load, the current draw drops going into the motor. So let me show you that. Okay, so let me go over what I've got here. I've got my 12 volt battery. I'm coming through the multimeter to read the current the amperage that this motor is taking to run. And then off the generator coils, I'm now coming off here, off the negative to this large uh, capacitor, and I'm coming over here through a diode. And that's to uh, make this, rectify this to DC so that I can pull off and run this 12 volt DC fan. So, uh, okay, that's all as it should be. Let me go ahead and fire it up and I'll show you kind of the interesting effect. Let me just show you what I've got. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it up and watch the uh, current draw as it starts up here. You can see it's pulling two, well it was two and a half amps. As it speeds up, it's slowing down here, but it's going to uh, stabilize out somewhere around two amps. But here's what's really interesting. Let me get back here and see if I can show this effect. I'm gonna turn on the DC fan. And when this fan comes on, watch the current draw to the motor. So here we go, I'm switching on the fan. And you can see the current draw on the motor drop down right at first. And now the fan's running. And we're pulling 1.3 amps. So that's a really cool effect. I'm used to generators that when you load the generator, the current draw goes up. So if you put load on your motor and the motor slows down, generally the current draw goes up. So a bit of an anomaly, and I always like to uh, research those, and that this is a pretty good one. So I'm going to turn the fan back off. The RPM increases and the current draw goes up. It's going to go back to about 2.2 .2 amps. Turn the fan back on. Nice dip in uh, current draw, and it goes down to about 1.3 amps. Okay, so I want to connect my multimeter over here and show you the voltage coming off the generator coils as well as the short circuit current. I'm not going to set up multiple multimeters and measure the watts in versus watts out. I'm not looking to accurately measure the efficiency of this right at this point. I was just trying to see if I could get the effect where the current draw to the motor drops when it's connected to a load. That's really all I was shooting for in this video and I've achieved that. I'll carry on and we'll see what else I get to. But right now I just wanted to show that. I'll go ahead and uh, turn the fan off. You can see the current draw goes up. And we'll go ahead and get my multimeter over here and connect it up on this and do some measurements here.
Okay, so connecting my multimeter here to the output of the generator coils to measure the voltage, you can see that it's 160 volts. And you can also see here that we're doing 2.2 .2 amps in because there's essentially no load on the system right now. I'll go ahead and switch over here. I've got to switch to the uh, amperage setting. And we'll take a look at the amperage. So the short circuit amperage right now is about half an amp. And that's short circuit there. So 4.63 amp on the short circuit side. And the current draw has dropped to 1.2 amps. So I can go ahead and disconnect the multimeter plug here and you'll see the current draw go back up when it's disconnected. And when I dead short this, it drops all the way down to 1.2 amps. And it's giving an output over here of about half an amp. So anyway, that's it. Let's all keep experimenting and we'll talk later.